His Excellency Mr. Kuril Suk Ukna, President of Mongolia, Her Excellency Ms. Batset Seg Batmong, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Mongolia, Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, I'm honored to join you for the first ever Women Foreign Ministers Meeting in Mongolia. At the outset, I thank and commend the Government of Mongolia for this important initiative. I deeply appreciate its long tradition of pursuing a feminist foreign policy and placing women at the forefront of its socioeconomic endeavors. I convey my sincere thanks to Foreign Minister Batmung for inviting me, but I sincerely regret that I cannot be there in person due to scheduling conflicts, but deeply appreciate, it, appreciate this opportunity to share a few thoughts virtually. Excellencies, the focus of this event on the role of women in promoting peace and security, tackling climate change, and ensuring food security is indeed very timely. These are all interrelated issues and, in fact, the most pressing challenges of our time. They also hold the key to emerging from the current overlapping crises of the COVID-19 pandemic, conflicts, and climate change. The gender dimension of these issues is also well recognized. As the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said, and I quote, gender equality offers a path to sustainable peace and conflict prevention, and yet we are moving in the opposite direction. He also pointed out that the climate crisis hits women and girls the hardest. They suffer disproportionately from the lack of food, water scarcity, and forced migration. At the UN, we have placed gender equality at the front and center of our agenda. We have already reached gender parity among our senior leadership and our resident coordinators. The UN Secretariat is expected to reach that landmark in professional staff by 2025. Peacekeeping missions have also made significant strides, although at a slower pace. Globally among nations, however, we are far off track in our pursuit of achieving SDG 5. At the current pace, it will take 286 years to close the gaps in legal protection, 140 years for women to be represented equally in workplace leadership, and another 40 years to achieve equal representation in national parliaments. Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, as the high representative for the least developed countries, landlocked developing countries, and small island developing states, my office is working relentlessly to address the barriers to gender equality and women's empowerment in the 92 most vulnerable countries of the world that we support. This is, however, a daunting task. Most of these countries are on the front lines of the climate crisis, affecting women, affecting women the most and amplifying existing gender inequalities. In many of these countries, women bear a disproportionate responsibility for securing food, water, and fuel. For example, in half of the LDCs, women constitute 80% of the agricultural workforce. And during periods of droughts, they need to work harder to secure income and resources for their families. And they're often the last to eat after making ends meet for all others. In small island developing states, working aged women are 22% more likely to live in extreme poverty than men. Of the 46 least developed countries, three quarters are enduring conflict or emerging from it. Women in these contexts are exposed to the worst forms of discrimination and gender-based violence. Yet, excellencies, women are central to building communities and to building resilience. They are the custodians of traditional and local knowledge and disaster response, sustainable land management, and coping with climate change. And when it comes to peace and security, women have proven time and again that they are powerful agents to promote dialogue, reconciliation, and sustainable solutions. And as primary caregivers, women play a pivotal role in achieving food security for their families and communities. We must therefore recognize, facilitate, and amplify the role of women in every sphere of our lives. It is not only a matter of justice and equality. It is also the most pragmatic way to tackle the complex challenges the world is facing today. By unleashing the transformative power of women, we can create a more inclusive, peaceful, and sustainable future for all. 
Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, allow me to offer a few specific points in this regard. First, it is an urgent priority to address the dramatic reversal in the progress of SDG 5. The Secretary General's report, Our Common Agenda, proposed five transformative measures to achieve gender equality. The SDG Summit this year and the Summit of the Future in 2024 will also be critical opportunities to reaffirm and bolster our shared promise to create an equal and inclusive world for men and women. Second, we need more targeted policies and initiatives to enhance the capacity of women to contribute more effectively to diverse fields. Enhanced investment in women's education and training, including for STEM education, is essential to advance this agenda. Equally important is to increase opportunities for women in science and research, politics and journalism, and security services where they are underrepresented. Successful women professionals can play an active role in encouraging young, young women to take up these challenging professions in greater numbers. Last week, we celebrated the International Day of Women in Diplomacy to highlight women's critical role in global affairs and to encourage more women, young women, to embrace challenging professions. Thirdly, Excellencies, women entrepreneurs and women-led organizations need enhanced access to financial resources. The international financial institutions, the RDBs and MDBs can play a crucial role in this regard, especially by providing more dedicated funding windows, grants, affordable credit, and risk mitigation support. The private sector can also contribute, including through dedicated loan programs for women-led businesses, public-private partnerships, impact investments, etc. And finally, Excellencies, we must adopt a whole-of-society approach to harness the full potential of women in promoting peace and security, tackling climate change, and ensuring food security. Governments, civil society, and international institutions must prioritize knowledge sharing, resource mobilization, and joint actions to eliminate gender-based violence in all its forms and manifestations. Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, as women leaders in our respective fields, we should continue to pool our collective resolve and resources to achieve gender equality and women's empowerment. To empower and enable women everywhere to reach their full potentials, to live a life of dignity and justice, and not to be left behind in our policies, actions, and achievements. Through this meeting, we are sending a strong message of that resolve and commitment, and I'm honored to have been part of this excellent initiative. I shall rest it here by once again congratulating Foreign Minister Batmung for convening us and for her leadership. I thank you.